After a short hiatus, Python has finally returned to LEGO Spike Prime. So what has been added, what has been changed, and what has been completely removed? Let's find out. While I was in the USA, Python coding was reintroduced to LEGO Spike Prime. In case you've been living under a rock in the last 10 years, you would know that Python is the most popular programming language in the world. It is used everywhere from AI to websites and of course, robotics. So why not get started learning Python with LEGO Robotics? Now I've been making hundreds of Python videos on this channel for the previous versions of Spike Prime. And if you haven't updated your software to the latest version, or if you are using the LEGO Mindstorms Robot Inventor, then you can see my playlist over here. However, if you are ready to say hi to the latest version of LEGO Spike Prime, then this video is for you. Today, we are going to go over all of the changes in the new version, and I will follow this up with a new series of Python tutorials. The sponsor of today's video is More Educational, who has kindly provided the LEGO Spike Prime kit for us. More about them later in this video. First of all, let's see what has been completely removed. Gone are the wait functions like wait for seconds and wait until. Even the timer has been removed. So what are we supposed to do to put pauses in our code? Well, we now have the sleep function in the new run loop library. To be honest, the wait functions were a bit redundant in the beginning anyway. The new sleep method feels more like real Python, even though it is using a different library. So why is this run loop library so good? Make sure you watch until the end of the video to see what has been added. Also gone is the boilerplate code that imports every single spike library into every project. Now you have to really think about what libraries and classes you'd need to import instead of having a mystical cloud of code up on the top that has everything imported. In the long run, this makes your code more efficient, use less memory, and of course, teach students how imports work. Another thing removed for the better are the spike operators like greater than, equal to, and less than. I made 100 hours of tutorials without using any of it anyway because I just used the uh, Python conditional operators. I don't think anyone is going to miss that. Making this video took a lot of work and experimentation. I spent days trying to work out all the different features and another few days filming and editing this video. So if you learned anything useful, then please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Now on to the changes. Motors have now got acceleration and deceleration values built in, so you don't have to write your own acceleration functions anymore. This is honestly a game changer. Previously, in robot competitions like First Lego League, word block programmers had all the advantages in their motor control due in no small part to acceleration modes. Now there is an actual benefit to coding in Python because the acceleration of the motors can be fine-tuned in a way that can't be done using Scratch. Secondly, braking modes are now available to single motors, not just motor pairs. Honestly, I don't know why it has taken this long, but I'm glad both single and paired motors can now benefit from braking modes. The next big change comes to the gyro sensor or motion sensor library. It can now reset all tilt angles, not just the yaw value. So you can now build a robot with the hub in any orientation and still reset the values to zero. This gives all kinds of self-balancing robots more options and makes it easier to program. The distance sensor has gone through some pretty big changes. There are no more wait for distance closer than or farther than helper functions, so you will need to actually use classic Python to solve your distance sensor problems, which is great because I never use the helper functions in my tutorials. Uh, I just use the Python functionality. Now, Lego has just given you a nudge to learn more classic Python. Also gone is the imperial measurement system. Now all distances for the distance sensor come back in millimeters. So sorry to my American friends, Lego has chosen a side, but don't worry, I will show you how to make your own millimeters to inches function in the next few videos. And finally, we have the new additions. 
This version of Python now has device handling, allowing you to detect availability and status of connected motors and sensors, which gives more reliable control over your attachments. This allows you to potentially change your devices while a program is running, which will give more options for robot enthusiasts. And I can also imagine that this will lead to uh, better support for third-party peripherals, but let's wait and see. Last but definitely not least, the new run loop library has asynchronous function handling, meaning you can run multiple functions in parallel. In the past, we had to work around the single thread in Python with things like motor start uh, in order to get things to run in parallel. But with this new feature, running multiple actions is going to be much, much easier. Ever since Creator Academy started making LEGO education videos, we have been greatly supported by the experts at More Educational. They are an authorized partner of LEGO Education with over 20 years experience working with LEGO Education products. So if you're in Australia and you want to buy genuine LEGO Education products like the ones shown in this video, then make sure you visit the More Educational website. It seems to me that the new version of Python has finally caught up to most of the functionality from the word blocks. And the new asynchronous methods are going to make Python a viable coding language for competitions. I can't wait to do some new tutorials for this system. Uh, what do you think of these latest changes? Make sure you leave your comments in the comment section below. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.